Hello ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here. Welcome back to another Foxhole video. Today, I want to talk a little bit about something that I think most multiplayer games are missing. Something that I have found I absolutely love about Foxhole, and I think why it's grabbed me, and that is context. Now when we do a battle in Battlefront or Battlefield, any of these round-based combat games with combined arms, it's always one round, when it's over, maybe you unlock some kit, but the battle itself doesn't matter. Foxhole's different. Foxhole is a giant sandbox war between two factions where you have to take territory that represents their supplies, resources, and technology for your faction for the greater conflict. It's 24-7, it is a single server at the moment, and it's pretty epic. The battle you're seeing right now is a battle of Dendro Fields. It's just to the east of Sitaria, uh, one of the major cities for the Colonials, which is my faction. We're on the back foot. We've been fighting and being pushed back and pushed back. And when I jumped on, our major supply hub was being attacked. Right now, both factions are just kind of just sitting on opposite sides of this road as it's no man's land. No one can build anything that can prevent them from getting shot or that can secure the area. They have to push to the other side and build and that's that's problematic. Scout, take left side, rotate left. Rotate left, hard left, straight to it. Now, we managed to repel the attack and chase the Wardens all the way to this relic base in the field. Left, now, left. in that shot you see here, we've destroyed the base and we've won the battle. What was a attack by our enemy has become a rallying cry for our faction and we managed to push forward and take territory again. Now, fast forward about a half hour later and we've managed to take more territory. We've managed to push out of Great March and into another server, another hex on this map called Umbral. Pushing north, we managed to break a path through and into an area called the Hermit's Rest. This is the new front line. In the woods, we're pushing on and pushing on, trying to get to Latius's tally. Now there is an enemy base that's in our way and we've been sieging it for a while. I am trying to support the armor that's rolled up and funny enough, not planned, I ran into Wasted Space here, who had jumped online a little bit later, jumped on one of the front lines, and we happened to run into each other, run into each other with Grandpa in the driver's seat. All we're trying to do is push forward, but not just push forward to take enemy territory. Our goal, at least myself and I think Wasted's, is to bring reinforcements and resupply to Shackled Chasm. We decided in this war to set up our base of operations as Armco, or Arm in Foxhole, in a place called Savages, which has been surrounded by the enemy. All territory has fallen on the Eastern Front, except for one little tiny piece. Far in the north, this little outcropping called Savages. This is where Armco was calling home this war. It probably won't be the same for next war, we'll probably mix it up, but this is where we've been you know, storing vehicles and supplies and, and rallying and whatnot. So it's important to us because we're holding there. The enemy decided that it would be easier to take the major supply hub in the south called Silk Farms than it would be to crack through us. And they still haven't taken it. It's been about two days of constant sieging. It's pretty amazing. And just for fun, we were like, let's try to break through. Let's try to get supplies to them. And so when the front started going that way, we signed on for it. So here we are, fighting the best we can, trying to take another relic base, but this one deep in the woods. Now, the terrain has changed the battle some. The battle for the relic base in the woods is going pretty well. We managed to take over this trench line that they had dug. This is one of the reasons why I don't actually like it when people dig trenches, because they can be easily turned against you. As we have just done, we've swamped the trench, we've taken it over, we're firing at them as they spawn from that relic base. In the top left hand corner of the screen, our baby tank, this is what I'm calling them, uh, the tanklets, these are new tanks that were added, 30 millimeter gun on it, two man crew, Wasted and Grandpa rocking it. We're trying to kill as many of them as we can while the little tank shells it. But what's curious is, the battle's going pretty well. Our guys are starting to figure out cover is a good thing and get back to the medics and, you know, we have a lot of new players and they're starting to learn. But where in the world is the enemy armor? When they were attacking the major supply city in the south, there was a lot of armor, and a lot of it was destroyed. I saw one streamer that day while I was busy doing other things and wasn't able to play knock out six tanks with the field anti-tank gun. Actually, a pair of them were doing really good work. Not to mention we had an absolute metric ton of 
artillery that had been set up almost in a meme way. But you know what? That shit worked because it just deleted the enemy base when they started firing off. Anyways, we're holding out, but we haven't seen any armor for a while. I'm managing to stay alive, kind of ducking in and out, going, running, and getting grenades. I actually managed to run out of ammunition and have to start running around with my pistol at this point. So, let's see how this battle, at least this life in the battle, as I'm scavenging for supplies, uh, turns out. Three inches, three infantry northeast, my position. Watch it, Freddy, right there. Fucking for shooting me. Oh, I'm out of bandage. Has anybody got any? Oh, thank you, medic. Warden across the road. He's down. Another one to the east. He's right over across the road. Watch it now. There he is. Damn. Wish he was in the way. Warden tank, northeast, northeast. There they go. Holy shit was the first thing that went through my head, and the second thing was a 30 millimeter round. <laughs> so the wardens had arrived with a bunch of armor. And this, this is what I love about this game. It is the ups and the downs. It is the ongoing story that's being played out between having our major city sieged and potentially going to be completely destroyed and the war is over to suddenly we're on the offensive and we're pushing and taking territory back. So what was the answer to those multiple tanks that showed up, right? Are we doomed? All we had was a single, uh, uh, well, at the time we only had a single tank. Well, the uh, freaking anti-tank, uh, the fat cannons, the uh, field anti-tank cannons showed up. Uh, and and started to just hold the line. They kept poking, and they started losing those tanks. And notice there's a couple of, well, there's three streamers now running around in this battle, um, and it was not anything planned. It just naturally happened because this is where one of the main fights were, uh, and I find hilarious. But yeah, with the, these two guys, these two uh, weapons showed up. Uh, the 77th showed up, and they started holding the line. They started poking out. They were being really careful. We had enemies, wardens coming through the trees in this night battle, and of course it's nighttime. So our POV, our range and how far we can see has been severely limited. So they're able to get pretty close. And all they gotta do is get a frag grenade on these guys or get a gas grenade in the right place if, if you are were being smart and keeping their gas masks on. And it was super intense and super awesome. And they just played this cat and mouse game. Because of the forest, the terrain, it was really hard to get shots for the AT guns and for the tanks to get through without being held up. The tanks didn't know where the infantry might be, and they didn't know if we had sticky grenades, which, by the way, we did not. Our supply lines were super thin at this point. And it's about now, somewhere around here, where the call comes out that we're almost out of soldier supplies. And I mean, we're down to, like, 12. And as you can see how many people are here, and people are dying all around us, that is not enough to keep up the fight. If you don't know what a soldier supply is, or a shirt is what everybody calls them, uh, they are your response. They have to be put into a building, which is going to be wherever you're going to be spawning, whatever you're tied to. You can set your spawn, and then you can spawn there as long as there are soldier supplies. But if the front line runs out of those, no one can respawn. And it wasn't too long after this moment that we actually ran out. But not before I said, okay, if we're going to keep this fight going, somebody's got to get on logistics. And so I left the front line, and I started running those supplies. Now, at first, I didn't want to do this. I wanted to stay on the front line, and I wanted to fight, right? That's where all the action was. But I knew that I had already queued up a bunch of shirts, and it looked like somebody had already made some too, so I could just grab them out of here. There's two factories in this town. One of them actually had shirts already in it. So I stole the Jeep. Nobody was using it. It was sitting there since the last time I'd been there, which was a couple of hours ago. I'm going to use it. The front line needs it. So I grab a wrench and break the lock on it and take off for the north. I've got to go through a bunch of territory that we re just recently managed to recapture. So nothing is locked down and hope that I make it up there with these supplies before, well, the front line gets wiped to the point where there are no troops 
on the front, managing to hold out. Now they stretched their supply a little bit longer because somebody was smart, they were playing the medic, and they are actually getting soldier supplies through picking up bodies off the ground and putting them into the medical tent. Basically a mash unit on the front line that turns, uh, well, horribly wounded soldiers into soldier supplies when you put the bodies in there, if you can recover them. It could even be enemy bodies. You get six per as of this war. And so they managed to you know, make it last just a little bit longer by pulling the shirts out of there. And eventually I did manage to make it while only being a little harassed by wardens behind the lines. If you notice, that's that's an enemy uh, soldier on the right, and that's one of our supply trucks. He actually managed to get ambushed on the way into town. Yes, need, um, At this point, I had accepted that, you know what, I'm going to be the guy who's supplying the front line. So I'm bringing up B-mats, I'm bringing up B-mats, which are basic materials, so the gun, the film the guns can repair themselves, so the tank can repair itself. I've also got, and they're unloading the jeep right now, that's why they're running up to it. Uh, I've got I'm ammunition, sure. I start running to the front line, and I do this for about an hour and a half, just bringing ammunition, bullets, right, supplies to repair, to keep these guys in the fight. And uh, it's a it's great how you can affect the battle, how one person can affect the battle back and forth. Between the guys who built this bunker base, so we had a closer spawn point to uh, the tank crew that's yeah, running around right there, to the AT gunners who managed so. to basically make it so this front line stayed alive for hours and hours, even though six or so tanks ended up showing up into the fight. Still 20 on board, somebody grab And we pressed on, we continued to siege. On the second or third night, it's kind of a blur now in this ongoing struggle, we eventually did manage to surround the relic base, get those AT guns, get the armor up there. We had a couple more light tanks show up, more infantry showed up to join the push. It started to get stronger and stronger and people started, well, honestly, I think they just kind of started rallying. It feels good to start winning and people want to be on the winning side. And we'd been pushed back for so long, just having a front line that was moving again and not stuck behind a damn bridge was, it's just funner to fight in. It's super fun. So we ended up surrounding it. We do manage to destroy it here. I'm bringing up ammunition for the third time. More tanks are showing up and we're one step closer to savages. Now, as I record this, and I am making sure that these videos are backdated. So chances are this war is already over. Uh, but because I'm not going to post this until after it's over because I might give away some kind of intelligence to the enemy. Um, and I don't want to be unfair to the rest of the players. It's weirdly something I have to worry about. I have to worry about operational security while making videos. How bizarre is that? So one step closer, the battle continues. It is now 2 a.m. So I hope tomorrow morning I wake up and the troops have continued to push through. But who knows, they could have gotten bogged down on a bridge. They may have changed to a different front. Update from the front line. Turns out I didn't actually go to sleep and I continued the fight for another few hours after editing that portion of the video. We managed to make it all the way to Savages. We managed to relieve Armco from the siege and the force that we brought with us opened up a supply line to the city. So now we've got supplies rolling in, Armco is spawning, and we've got a huge army of all kinds of different regiments from all over the server fighting in the region, starting to make their way south. The fighting continues as of today, and I'm just going to leave you guys with a clip of the battle as of just before I went to bed early, early, early in the morning on the last day of the Siege of Savages. Can you pop those foxholes to the south-southeast for us? Yeah, sure do. And there's a watchtower over there too. I don't see the AT. Oh, Medic, thank you. Right behind you. Uh, appreciate it, dude. No worries. Okay, Warden's sweeping in from the southwest and starting to come around you. Warden rushing, Warden rushing. Please kill him. Yeah, man. Find you a medic. 
Hey, dude, thank you for taking that. Oh, shit. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, I gotta protect him. Spicy. With my face. Keep running back. Keep going back. Okay. Oh, God. Here they come. Drop the guy and shoot. Shoot the warden, please. Oh, Drop my God. Drop me. You're good. You're good. You're good. We're gonna save everybody. If I have to dive in front of the rocket for him. Much appreciated. Okay, I think you're back. Let's go find you. Guys, medic. help us. Medic. He whipped it. The <laughs> tank's alive. Uh, can we get repairs? Repairs, repairs, repairs. Repairs, repairs. Repairs, repairs. Please repair. And we got a foxhole on the left. 5%? Holy shit. I got your stuff. Some of your stuff. I'm gonna drop it right behind you, dude. All right, we're holding oh, the air. Thank you. Yo, Captain Shack, it is your job to prevent any more grenades from reaching this tank. You got it. Sticky. Target down. I believe in you, Shack. I'm out of ammo. I'll, I'll touch you. Oh, fuck. <laughs> My last two bullets, man. I didn't want it to get, uh, you know, uh, do you have you Down to the pistol. Oh, I'm using 7.6. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right, anyone healing? Anyone healing? Did you ever know, Ammo Man, you're my hero? Yeah, you Does anyone, yeah, anyone need healing? Okay, we got a foxhole to our left, back, a foxhole in front of us. Don't crawl. Yeah, those are foxholes. So we'll wait for the armor to kill the foxholes. Push up with them. Don't with the sticky rushes. Okay, careful, you got an yeah, AT gun go. farther ahead, don't go too far. Uh, we're going back to Matt, so watch out, boys, be safe. I can see it, it's, it's right where that fox was. Left side. Go back, go lay. Three, that's set the tree, he's at the tree. Don't have a shot. Oh, that man just got stabbed. I've seen it. Ooh, the foxholes are shooting at you. Run! No! I come la 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 la. Those, there's the foxholes, though, you're seeing them now. Um, he was for bandages, he was bandaged. I got Don't some, cross I got face. I got need a few. Check me. Thank you. Y'all, uh, we made it. Hey, the right, infantry to the right. Oh, no! Hey! They can get me, Pops. No, run us over there, run us over there. Leading out, leading out, leading out. Is he down? Infantry, right, right, right. I can see the fire. Right. Need to move, we need to move. Move, move, move. Oh, oh shit. Fall back, fall back. Like, yeah, how did you even get out of there? Oh, he's down. Another one coming up. Got him. I don't kill him. Oh. Don't kill him. Did you want to interrogate him? All right, that's going to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel for more sci-fi gaming sandboxy goodness. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.